This is a recap of our lecture on governance. Don't forget that you can download all of our mind maps as a PDF for free on the website shown, or indeed buy the full course on which this recap is based, should you wish to do so. So remember, the first thing that we looked at here is what governance is. So we're thinking about corporate governance. It's a system of business governance, and it looks particularly at the shareholders and the stakeholders of the business. So that's the areas we're going to go on to look at in detail throughout this module. So why do we need to do this? Well, because there are joint stock companies. Joint stock companies are companies that are owned by the shareholders and they're run by management. So therefore, we have a potential conflict. And we'll look at this when we look at the agency problem in corporate governance. So the potential problem is that we have shareholders and management and their interests are not the same. Shareholders want a stable, long-term investment, whereas management, well, they want to get their benefits now. They want their payments and bonuses now. That's a potential conflict. So the benefits of having governance then, well, first of all, there's a business case to be made for it. Uh, it will attract investment through better controls. That will lead to more wealth in the organisation. So better controls mean there's less fraud and error, and that should lead to more shareholder wealth. There should be better management because you adhere to the corporate governance codes, and that should give investors confidence to invest with you. Because they've got that confidence, that will attract more investors. So that's the business case for having strong governance within an organisation. The purpose of corporate governance is to monitor management. Remember, we need to make sure that management are acting in the interests of shareholders, the owners of the business. We also need to do things like balance the board. We'll be talking about non-executive and executive directors. And we need to monitor audit. Ultimately, governance should ensure that long-term value is provided to the shareholders. So some of the concepts that we'll be looking at throughout this module are, first of all, fairness. So that looks particularly at shareholder and stakeholder equality. Also, ethics and ethical concepts. We'll be looking in detail at those ethical concepts and ethical behaviour. When it comes to integrity, there's an ethical code that we'll need to investigate in detail. We also said that transparency is a key to governance and good governance. That means that we have open information and a clear direction that is set out by the business. We also should have independence. So that means we'll have non-executive directors who are independent from the executive directors who don't work for the business. And that will mean that our board is independent. We should always have honesty within the business. That means honest reporting and taking an ethical stance. We'll look at that when we look at corporate social responsibility. And aligned to that, we'll look at responsibility within the organisation. That means having clear rules and an acceptance of that responsibility. We'll also look at accountability. And that means acting with clarity and having a clear risk management process. And all of this means that we'll have a good reputation for the business. That means that we can take a moral stance and ensure that the reputation of the business is not damaged. So we looked at some of these concepts in illustration one. Remember that the relevance of governance will be primarily to larger companies. So the rules apply to all listed businesses, but are good practice for all companies to implement. So all, all, some aspects of this will apply to all companies. We also then looked at not-for-profit organisations and said that governance in these organisations will be slightly different, but it's still very, very important. So it's set out under the not-for-profit code and it looks at the following areas. Board leadership of the organisation, making sure that the board is in control of performance, making sure also that the board performs a uh, well and in a way and a good way and making sure that the board actually does what it's supposed to do so therefore we have high performance from that board also review of the board and board renewal board delegation to the senior management within the charity or the not-for-profit organization and integrity of the board or trustees Lastly, board openness because people who contribute to the not-for-profit organisation will want to see that they're contributing to an organisation that is effective. So we looked at that in detail in illustration two. 
The last thing we introduced in this session was stakeholders. So we remember are looking at stakeholders in detail later on, but we're thinking here, who are the main stakeholders within the business? And they will be people who have a legitimate interest in the business. So internal to the organisation, we need to be aware of the directors, whose role will be to have corporate responsibility and to set the strategy for the organisation. The things that they'll be interested in will be their pay and bonuses, and obviously having power within the organisation. So those will be things that directors will want. Others within the organisation will be the company secretary, who's in charge of compliance with a company's house rules, for example. Management, who run the business day to day. Employees who work for the business. And of course, trade unions who help those employees and maintain employee rights. So those are all internal stakeholders. External stakeholders will be the auditors who report to the shareholders. Also regulators who implement and monitor the regulations applying to that industry or to that business. Government will want a legislation to be upheld and also the stock exchange will want their rules and regulations to be abided by. Lastly, investors. Well, these are key stakeholders. They will have limited power, but we need to make sure to take them into account. So this really was an introductory lecture, just saying these are all the things that we're going to look at throughout these modules, and we're going to then go on and look at them in detail.